Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason, thanks for watching. Today we're checking out this small little power station. Well, it might be small, but it definitely packs a punch. This is the Energizer 320. Now, like the name suggests, it has 320 watt hours of capacity. And inside this power station, it has lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means you can charge it up and discharge it every single day for five and a half years and still have 80% of the capacity. That's 2000 life cycles. Now, this power station comes in at a price of $329. Now, I also have a 10% discount code in the video description for my viewers. If you guys want to pick this thing up you can save 10% so check out the video description now you guys know in these videos I do all the extensive testing on this battery to make sure everything works and stands up to its advertising claims by the end of this video you should know if this is something that you'll want to purchase or not now let's go ahead and jump right into the front panel I think you guys are gonna like the display and all the power output options now looking at the display you have a battery icon with an actual percentage and it tells you what's enabled so your DC output or your AC inverter and it gives you an estimated runtime at the current load so with the AC inverter on we're using a little bit of background power so it's estimating 48 to 47 hours until the battery runs out of power right here it gives you a net wattage so the power coming in and out it does the math and it'll tell you what's going on right here you have your main power button a long hold will turn on and off the power station a quick press will turn on and off the DC output. A quick press over here will turn on and off the AC inverter. Now for your charging inputs down here, you have a 5521 barrel connector and a USB-C power delivery port that supports 100 watts. Now this is an input or output port. I'm gonna talk about those charging options a little bit later. Now right here for USB options, you have a USB-C power delivery output port only. It's a 60 watt port two USB-A 3.0 quick charge ports. Now for DC power options, you have a 5521 barrel connector over here that supports 10 amps. And then we also have a 12 volt cigarette plug that supports 10 amps with the dust cover to keep out moisture and dust. Now this power station does in fact have a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter and I tested the wavelength with my oscilloscope and everything checked out fine. It does have a 60 hertz setting so it's very similar to the power you get out of your wall. Turning the power station on the side you'll see there are two AC outlets here you can pull a total of 300 watts continuous. Now I did do a test on that level. I ran this for over five minutes at max load and it actually ran everything perfectly fine. The internal cooling fans did turn on. There's one on each side and it kept the battery in an inverter cool and I didn't see any issues. Now another cool thing about this battery is it supports both the AC inverter and DC output at the same time and I was able to pull almost 500 watts continuously out of both those outputs on this battery. So for its size it supports a ton of continuous power. Now of course I also had to do some testing on the 12 volt output to see how much power we could pull before it shut off. Now I plugged in my battery load tester to the 12 volt cigarette plug on the side and I turned it all the way up and it didn't shut off until I got to 12.5 amps or 165 watts. So super impressive for such a small battery. Most of the power stations you'll see around 120 watts output but I was able to get 165 on this power station. Now on a second note the 12 volt output on this power station is not regulated. It's the direct output of a 4 lithium iron phosphate battery so you have 13.3 volts all the way down to 12.2 volts and that's plenty of voltage to run any 12 volt appliance that you need to this has lithium iron phosphate so the voltage is higher now each of these power stations have a rated capacity this one has a total of 320 watt hours i like to verify to see the actual capacity so i charge this up to 100 percent and then discharged it down all the way using this battery load tester. Now it shut off the DC output at 4%. Let's go ahead and see what the results were. Now the battery just shut off the DC output so there's no load on this battery, but I did discharge this at 64 watts, which is a 0.2C discharge rate. Now that test ran for four hours and 30 minutes exactly, and we got a total of 286 watt hours during the test or about 23.3 amp hours. So if we take the 286.5 watt hours we pulled through the test and divide it by the 320, it tells us we pulled around 89.5% of the actual capacity of this battery. Now in this part of the video, I wanna go ahead and test the AC inverter efficiency on this power station. So I charged it up to 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and discharge it around 65 watts and we're tracking all the power usage through this kilowatt meter. So as it goes down from 100% down to 0%, we'll track all the watt hours that are pulled here and we'll compare it to the DC output and that'll tell us how efficient the inverter is. Okay, the test just ended. The AC inverter shut off at 4% remaining on the battery. Okay, so the watt meter showing we pulled 260 watt hours as we took the battery from 100% down to 4%. 
Now, if we divide that 260 by the 286, which is the actual capacity that we got during the DC discharge test, that gives us a 90% efficiency rating on this inverter. So I'm pretty happy with these capacity results. Pretty impressive for such a small battery. Now there are four different ways to charge with this power station. Let me just dive into each one briefly and show you the max charge amount that you'd get using each charging method. Now the first option you have to charge up this power station would be to use the 12 volt cigarette plug adapter. Now this plugs into your car or another battery and you can get around 40 watts of charging while using this charging method. Now the second charging option would be using a solar panel with these MC4 connections. I'll go ahead and show you guys a demonstration of solar testing right after this portion of the video. Now the third way to charge up this power station is by using a USB-C power delivery cable. As you can see, we get 104 watts charging, and this is the single fastest way to charge up this power station. Now the fourth option to charge up this power station would be using the included wall adapter. And while charging, you'll get around 62 to 64 watts input on the power station. Now the owner's manual specifically states that the input charging port supports 10.8 volts all the way up to 23.5 volts. So I wanted to see if there was some sort of current limit. So I have my adjustable power supply plugged in, set it to 23.44 volts and 10 amps, and you can see it's limiting it at three amps. So that means if you have a higher voltage, then you're gonna get more wattage in on this battery. And that's why we saw a higher charging input with the solar panel or the wall charger versus using the DC plug. Now, the reason we saw more power input with the USB-C power delivery is because it does not use this input jack. It uses the power delivery input, which is 20 volts times five amps. So you will see more power through the USB-C power delivery versus this charging port here. Now, of course, I had to test to see if this supported dual charging. So I plugged in the USB-C power delivery cable and the AC adapter at the same time. So it uses both charging ports. And unfortunately, it does not support dual charging inputs. So the max amount of charge that you'll get is if you use the USB-C power delivery cable at 104 watts. Now, I always like to test to see if a power station can handle pass-through charging, which means it can charge itself while powering other devices so you can use it and charge it at the same time. Now, this may look a little bit crazy. I have the AC inverter on charging my GoLabs R500. I have my battery load tester through the 12 volt socket, and I have my phone charging via the 60 watt USB-C power delivery port. So all three output types are supported while it's charging. So that's pretty awesome. Okay guys, I'm outside here with three different solar panels I wanna test on the Energizer 320. Now you gotta remember that this has a three amp limit. So the solar panel with the highest voltage is going to win at producing the most power. Now these are the solar conditions today. We have some high clouds and it's around 50 degrees. So the three panels I'm gonna be using today is my XTAR SP100. This puts out around 113 watts. My Elikanta 120 watt panel, this puts out around 113 to 114 watts. And then my Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel. Now I wanna test the MC4 connections on that to make sure it works fine. And then these two both have barrel connectors that plug right into the power station. Let's go ahead and start with the XTAR SP100. Okay, so I have the XTAR SP100 plugged in. Getting around 63 watts to 60 watts input. Pretty respectable results. Let's go ahead and move on to the next solar panel. Okay, so here's the Elikanta 120 plugged in, 66 watts, so a little bit higher voltage. Uh, so we're just seeing a little bit more power on this solar panel. And uh, like I said earlier, the higher the voltage, the more power we're gonna get. Let's go ahead and test the final solar panel, the Bouge RV 180 watt. Okay, so I just hooked up the default MC4 adapter for the Energizer 320 up to my Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel. Polarity looks good, it's charging. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the screen. Okay, so I have the Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel connected up. You see we're seeing uh, around 64 to 66 watts input. So very similar to the Elikanta 120. Now in this video, I demonstrated you can use a glass rigid panel or folding solar panels. Just imagine if we used a 60 watt panel, we'd be getting around 40 watts with the high clouds today. But if we over panel it by using these larger solar panels, we can hit max power more frequently. And that's the benefit to over paneling. Remember the power station uh, limits to three amps. So as long as your input voltage is correct, you're not gonna damage the power station by using these larger solar panels. The power station is gonna pull the power it needs. And that's the benefit of over paneling. We have the extra power sitting around. So if there's high clouds or haze, we can still get the full power on the power station. Now on the opposite side of the power station, you have this diffused LED light. Now there are four modes on this light. You have a high mode, you have a low mode, you have an SOS mode, and then you have a strobe mode. 
Now what's so nice is this is so lightweight that basically you can just carry this around like a flashlight that's gonna last forever. And with the diffused light, that means it kind of disperses the light out. It's not like a spot beam. So this would really light up a tent or a, you know, the back of a cab if you're camping, or if in a room like this, if the power went out, you could light up the room pretty well. Or because it's so light, you could put this in a rooftop tent and you know, carry it up there and have light up there without any issues. Now I wanna go ahead and try to run my 12 volt compressor fridge just overnight to see if it shuts off from any eco mode settings. Now I don't usually recommend running a 12 volt compressor fridge off a small battery like this. I always recommend at least 500 watt hours, but this should at least get it through the night. So we'll go ahead and let this run, see if it shuts off and see how much power is left in the morning. We're sitting at 91% now, so we'll check the percentage back in the morning. Okay guys, it's the next morning. The test ran for about nine hours and the battery's sitting at 75%. It did use a little bit of capacity on the battery, but it's pretty cold in my basement so this fridge doesn't have to run that much. I'd expect a little bit more power usage if it was warmer. Now this is good news for anybody that's wanting to use the 12 volt output. You could run a CPAP on eco mode, a 12 volt compressor fridge, or even a DC powered fan and the DC output should not shut off. Okay guys, we're heading to the end of the video here. I just have a few more things I wanna talk about. Now you know I did all the testing on the AC inverter, the DC output, we did the capacity testing, and everything checked out really good on this power station. Now if you guys saw the video I put out about three weeks ago, there were seven features that I'd recommend that you have on every single power station you purchase. So let's go ahead and see if this has all seven of those features. So number one was if it charged in four to five hours from zero to 100%, and yes, this does. So you can check that one off. Number two is does this offer pass-through charging? Yes, it does. We can check that one off. Number three, does this have a pure sine wave inverter? Yes, it does. We check that off. Number four is does this have a regulated DC output? Now this one's kind of halvesies. It doesn't have a regulated DC output, but it does have the higher voltage of a lithium iron phosphate chemistry battery. So you'll have to make the decision if that works for you or not. Now, number five was if it had a display that gave all the information that you need to know. And yes, this definitely has all that great information. So I will give that a checkbox as well. Now, number six was just to see if this had any auto shut off settings that if you had the power station powered on for six hours or 10 hours, it would automatically shut off kind of to save power. And I didn't see that. We were able to run my 12 volt compressor fridge just fine. So I'd go ahead and give that one a checkbox. And number seven, the last one was if it had USB-C 100 watt power delivery. And the bonus would be if it supported input and output. And this does have all that. In fact, that's the fastest way to charge that up is by using a 100 watt USB-C cable. Now, speaking about USB-C power delivery, I picked up this really cool desktop charger. Now, if you guys seen my other videos, I'm always trying to charge up this power station at 100 watts. And the only way I can do that is by using another power station. Well, that changed. I recently picked up this Caval desktop USB-C power delivery charger. Now, this is really cool. It supports 120 watts charging, so you can have two 60 watt USB-C power delivery options at the same time, or you can have one 100 watt power delivery option. So I will be having a full review on this soon on the channel, but this was super helpful to charge up this power station because I didn't have to waste power from another power station. I could just use this straight off the wall to charge this up. So stay tuned for this device to be on the channel because I absolutely love this. It's worked so good and I wanna show you exactly what this is and how it works. So that's basically everything that I wanted to share about this power station. The price is pretty good. I would just recommend trying to find a coupon or discount code when you go to purchase uh, this power station because there are some pretty good deals available. So you may want to wait for a good deal to be available and then pick it up. Now, really, I didn't see any issues with this power station. I don't really have anything to complain about. It checked all the boxes and really has a lot to offer. Now, one little thing that I noticed on the bottom here, there's a sticker and it actually gives you a customer service email that you can reach out to if you have any issues. And I love how that's on the bottom of the power station. So you don't have to have the owner's manual or anything like that if you're wanting to get some help with an issue on this power station. Now in the owner's manual, it does say it comes with a year warranty and you can reach out to them if there's any issues. And I always recommend that you read the owner's manual to be completely familiar with this power station. And then when you get this, make sure you completely test it out, test out all the functionality, discharge it all the way down, charge it all the way back up. Just make sure everything works so that, you know, as time goes by, 
Um, you don't discover an issue, you know, six months down the road that, hey, that USB port isn't working. So if you're gonna purchase one of these, always test it out when you first get it. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions or comments about this power station, go ahead and throw a comment down below. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And uh, hopefully you guys like the content. I have a lot more coming out on the channel. We'll see you guys in the next video.